President Obama came into office promising a transformational foreign policy. He was going to make peace between the Arabs and Israel, build bridges to the Muslim community, reset relations with Russia, advance nuclear disarmament, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, not surprisingly, he hasn't achieved that. But he has, in the process of pursuing that, become, I would argue, a progressive pragmatist. In other words, his progressive goals haven't changed, but he's become very pragmatic in how he pursues them. He's prioritized relations with the big powers and with the big issues. So whether it's Iran or North Korea on the nuclear side, or managing the China relationship effectively with that big emerging country, or resetting relations with Russia, he has really not gotten sidetracked into dealing, for example, with uh, uh, Venezuela as a major foreign policy issue, or Cuba as a major foreign policy issue. So I think he's prioritized well. He's become very pragmatic and therefore less transformational. But I think he's been relatively effective given the intractability of the problems that he confronts day to day. The left has criticized Obama because he has not been transformational. Uh, but I would argue that his campaign rhetoric uh, reflected the fact that he had never really served in a foreign policy position. He just did not, I presume, appreciate how intractable the problems are that he would have to wrestle with. And at the end of the day, how little control the United States would have over them. Uh, even at the height of our power, as a recent volume by another Brookings author, Bob Kagan, pointed out, even at the height of our power, we never could tell other countries what to do and expect them actually to do it. Uh, we were in a good negotiating position, but we can't dictate what other sovereign countries should do. Their domestic politics don't allow it. Uh, so I think that he overpromised in the 08 campaign, maybe out of naivete, maybe simply as a campaign strategy. Whatever it was, it was promising more than he could deliver. Uh, the right has, I think, grossly mischaracterized what he's done in office. Uh, they pointed to the policy shortcomings. For example, he has not succeeded in stopping the Iranian nuclear program and said, therefore, the guy is totally ineffective, not credible, uh, not willing to be tough, and so forth. I don't think that's a credible critique, frankly, is utterly divorced from the facts of the case. Uh, on Iran, for example, he has managed to put together a coalition of countries to put pressure on Iran that includes Russia. Uh, that's a remarkable achievement. He has increased sanctions on Iran, sanctioned by the international community to a level to where they've, beyond where they've been before. Uh, he has uh, been very tough in his dealings with Iran, but he sought to reserve military action as a truly last resort, because frankly the consequences of military action are not predictable and may well be extremely adverse. Uh, so I think the, the criticisms of the left are fair, uh, but reflect his confronting reality after having promised transformation. The criticisms from the right, I think, in general, are not fair because they don't reflect the realities of how intractable most of these issues are. Where you measure a president realistically by how well he manages issues, not by his ability simply to dictate outcomes. So Obama came in inheriting uh, a tremendous deflation in views about U.S. wisdom, frankly, and U.S. capability. In addition, the real repercussions of the financial crisis have, of course, squeezed our own economy. It's driven up our fiscal deficits right on the cusp of the retirement of the baby boom generation. It's driven up our costs to cope with unemployment compensation and all the things you run into in a very deep recession. Uh, so it both hit our soft power and detracted from our real capabilities. Uh, and the third leg of this was it took away from the shadow of the future. In other words, countries not only react to you on the basis of what you're capable of doing, but especially with the United States on what they anticipate you'll be capable of doing in the future. And our future has become less certain, uh, less clearly dominant uh, than was the case before in the way people look at us. I see this very vividly around Asia, where people around the region really want the U.S. to succeed, but frankly are not completely sure we will. 
So our conclusion in this book, and my own conclusion personally, frankly, but this is something all three authors agreed on 100%, is that probably the most important single thing for assuring America's standing and uh, America's role in the world, uh, assuring that this role is what we would like it to be, will be the president's ability to get on top of the politics of our domestic economy, uh, to forge the kind of political agreement that is necessary at a national level to adopt the policies necessary to address responsibly our long-term fiscal problems. You know, the climate change issue highlights very well the intersection of domestic and foreign policy. Uh, President Obama came into office not at all being a climate skeptic. He really believes in the science on this. And he recognizes that the U.S. Uh, has a huge role to play in how effectively the world comes together to address climate change. The U.S. and China are the two biggest uh, carbon emitters. Uh, now China considerably larger than the United States, but we certainly are still uh, major uh, emitters of, of greenhouse gases now. He saw it when he came into office to be able to go to the Copenhagen Climate Conference at the end of 2009 and really play a very strong role in bringing together a global agreement on how to address carbon emissions in the future. Uh, he was tripped up on the way to the conference. Uh, he was tripped up by American domestic politics. He could not get and energy policy through the House and Senate. He succeeded in the House, where Nancy Pelosi marshaled the troops and got it done, but he failed in the Senate. Uh, and because he failed, we had a, he was playing a very weak hand in Copenhagen. I think he did the best he could there, but he was playing a weak hand. Uh, ever since then, we have been articulate advocates of the importance of dealing with climate change, but frankly, not very good role models in how to go about it.